I think the only intentionality for me was to be there, to make sure that I was there, that I was present, and that I was able to give her some level of comfort. And we had done a Lamaze class. So I at least was like, I knew how to rub her. Like, breathe, breathe. <laughs> but, but, but as I think about what I know now, like, I didn't know shit. It was like, it, it, was, it was almost offensive to think about how I showed up. I had my first child when I was 26, and uh, my then fiance, now ex-wife, and I were just trying to figure stuff out. And so, you know, it was a 30-hour labor, and um, I, 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 f I had to fly in from somewhere, and she was still in labor, and it was considered a traumatic birth, and I couldn't cut the cord. Um, and, and so, I, you know, I don't even know why at that point I never thought about any other kind of childbirth options. What I will say is despite having a traumatic birth in a hospital and the hospital not really having anything to do with the fact that it was traumatic, um, but the hospital not helping, mm -hmm. I still, I don't ever remember anybody talking to me about options around being able to do this differently than in the hospital. and. Um, so fast forward almost 19 years later, uh, my, my now wife and I were preparing for our first son. We went to a birthing center and there are not many birthing centers in Maryland where we are. And so the closest birthing center was about 45 minutes away. And we're sitting, sitting there listening to this woman talk about all that they have. And I'm like, there's no way we can do this. this it, it's 45 minutes. Like I am not trying to have some movie style birth where we're doing 100 miles on the highway and we got to pull over so you can have this kid on the side of the road. And so I said, why don't we just do this at home? And, you know, we were at the birthing center because my wife hates needles. She hates hospitals. And we were thinking, what's another way? And we never thought about you know, what a home birth might look like, what it would require of us. Uh, but as soon as I said, why don't we just do this at home? Um, it just made sense. I think she felt better about it. I felt better about it. And then the birth itself, you know, our, our home midwife gave us the kit. Uh, we got the tub, we had all the supplies. Um, we, we knew what our plan was. We had our pre-birth, we had our pre-labor playlists. Um, I had gone and bought these crazy, this crazy light setup, so that I could I could create scenes with lights based on what her mood was and where she was. And we had candles that were consistent with you know what what she liked smelling as a pregnant woman versus what she used to like smelling as a non-pregnant woman. And uh, and then we also had the birthing playlist, which was very different from the pre-birth playlist. And so, you know, Avi goes into labor and in classic fashion, I am not home. And, and I really screwed up. Like, I really, really, really screwed up. I was a three-time dad already. And she, her water breaks and I don't panic. Mm. And I act like everything is cool. And I'm like, you know, how far dilated are you? And I don't immediately come home. Thankfully, um, when I got home and we put on the trap music pre-labor playlist mm -hmm. uh, so that we could walk and the baby could drop and she could breathe and uh, we could just get her in her in her um, her warrior empress mode. Mm -hmm. um, we found each other again. We had gone through um, prenatal yoga, mm -hmm. and so we had practiced. What are the phrases I'm gonna say? Um, and pushing her pelvis and and soothing her in the way that she needed to, and all of that. But watching her do it was just unbelievable. 
this little dude just comes out in the water. And I pick him up and I hand him to her. What makes the home birth for me so comfortable was not even being able to have the playlist and being in your own home and, and having family members cooking downstairs. And what was most incredible was uh, my wife giving birth to our sons and being able to lay in our bed and hold them and not get poked and prodded uh, every hour on the hour right. Um, right. by hospital folks. And, and, and I get for some folks that works, um, but for us to be in the comfort of our own home following the birth with her just being able to connect with the boys uh, and me being able to be there and help in our home, mm -hmm. uh, it was just incredible. Once you were, a, you know, an expecting father, what did you think your role was? And has that evolved or changed? When I was an expecting father for the first time, I think I thought like my role was, I'm gonna get the bag, I'm gonna run to the car, I'm gonna throw the bag in the car, I'm gonna back the car up, I'm gonna put her in the car, I'm gonna get her to, 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 the, to the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm gonna wait for the kid to come. Like that was, that was essentially what I thought. And, and I was in the, I was in the delivery room, but, but it, there was no real intentionality for me. I think the only intentionality for me was to be there, to make sure that I was there, that I was present, and that I was able to give her some level of comfort. And we had done a Lamaze class. So I at least was like, I knew how to rub her. Like, breathe, breathe. <laughs> but, but, but as I think about what I know now, like I didn't know shit. It was like, it, it, was, it was almost offensive to think about how I showed up. Nobody thought to tell me. Uh, this is what you should do. There wasn't no TV programs or, and in that time there wasn't a bunch of social media or there was no online content. Uh, the books that I was even being given to read were about parenting. Um, but there was nothing around, you know, how can you, like, like anything. It, like nothing, nothing about birthing, nothing about birthing options, nothing about the role you play, nothing about the the role leading up to the birth that that helps understanding my wife versus navigating my wife mm -hmm. um, was incredibly important. And so I think when I was when I was young, it was just like, all right. I, she gonna tell you to go to the grocery store and, and the shit ain't gonna make no sense. And she gonna want watermelon and, and ice cream, uh, uh, ice cream sandwiches with pistachios and mustard. And, and you just go get it. Like that for me was what I, I was navigating, whatever it is she said or whatever it is she felt. And I've evolved to the place where it was important for me to understand um, where my wife was emotionally mm -hmm. um, during the pregnancy, what that meant by way of how we engaged and how I responded to certain things, um, what it meant by way of me trying to be somewhat intuitive in, in understanding and then even in being intuitive and it changing and being wrong, mm -hmm. that I'd rather be intuitive and proactive and it be wrong and she be mad than me be sitting there waiting for her to tell me what to do. I just realized that men don't, we're not playing a sideline role. And, and while at the end of the day, this is her body, and in many cases, some of these decisions are her decisions, that she wants to know what I think. She wants to know why I believe that. She wants to know where I am with it. She wants to know my level of comfort. And so I, I evolved to really understand that we were birthing this child and she was delivering the child. Do you think that um, there is a role for men to play in pregnancy and childbirth that can positively impact um, the experience and potentially the health of our women and children? Without question. Um, I think that role is what 
y'all decide. I don't think there's a role. Um, and so there are, there are certain women that they like, this is what I need this to be. And Negro, this is where I need you to be in this process. There are other women that are like, I don't know what's going on. And yeah. And then there's people in between, right? And there's sisters in between. And so I think that that, that in between space is the space for us to be able to plan. Um, and so I, I, my hope is that brothers, you can have a level of vision around the role you want to play and then be confident in sharing with the mother of your children, the role you like to play. And then in you all's conversation, figure out the role that makes sense. And then for brothers to understand that for what seems like a really long time, but is not a really long time that this ain't about you and i think again in my first in my pregnancy with baldwin i lost sight of that um in a real way and i think that there was those moments that that male ego was kicking in and it's like damn like i know the baby is coming and i know that, that we're preparing for the baby. And I know that she's pregnant and I know that she's going through all this, but damn it, I'm here. Um, like, you know, I'm, 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 hello. Like, can I get some attention like somewhere? And I think it's, it's like, that is one of the most dangerous periods for husbands and future fathers as it relates to not only intimacy, um, as it relates to fidelity, um, as it relates to the ability to emotionally connect, because the male ego can be fragile, like unnecessarily fragile at times. And, and I don't even think it's about brothers being terrible brothers. No. I just think that we don't manage our egos well often. And I think from the beginning of the process, we have to be like, yo, this is about 10 months minimal where like there has never been and probably never will be a time where there is little that matters about me mm -hmm. as this time. 